Hi, my name's Rob, I'm a smartphone filmmaker, and today we're talking about a beginner's guide to ND filters. So I'm gonna show you how to attach these to your phones and the various ways you can do that, when to use them in terms of what lighting conditions, how to use them, when not to use them as well outdoors, as well as how you can use them indoors in certain conditions if you punch more light into the scenes as well. You'll be able to expose both outdoors and indoors. At the end of the video, I'm also gonna to talk to you about what the ND numbers mean and what the stock numbers mean. So when you're buying these ND filters, you can say, oh, okay, that's an ND such and such. That means I can use that for really bright conditions or maybe bright indoors. I'll explain everything. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button now, hit the like button. I've got plenty of videos covering everything smartphone filmmaking as well. Let's get into it. Now, one of the most common questions I get asked is, how do I actually attach my ND filters to my phone? So to show you how I do this, I actually bought a filter clip. Now I couldn't find these sold individually. I would look around, because I'm sure nowadays you must be able to get these individually really cheap. But I had to get this, I had to buy this as a set with a newer uh, filter clip, uh, filter, sorry, ND filter variable one. Now I didn't actually want this, because I've already got the Moondog Labs filters, however, this is the cheapest way I could find to get a clip. So I'd look around to see if you get this separately so you don't have to buy a lens or clip that you don't actually want. But um, this clip works the same as a clothes peg, just like that. And then, so we've got the lens here, there, and you just wanna slot it on so it covers all around the lens. So you don't want any light coming in from the back of the phone. So if you've got light coming through the gaps here into the phone, that's gonna get into the lens and the filter that you're using and end up causing distortion and sort of light rays across your image, which you really don't want. And it will just make the image look terrible. So you wanna make sure it's nice and secure on there, no light coming from behind. That's the clip attached. Now the newer filter, sorry, yeah, the newer filter that I got with this, that simply screws on, because it's made for this one. And in there, you've got the filter attached really easily. So if you're just doing handheld, you can just have it like that, nice and easy. Or if you prefer, you can just kind of Put it sideways, make sure it's not covering up your lens. Yeah, sideways, so it's a bit easier to use handheld. Or you can use the Ulanzi U-Rig Pro, which I use. So you can have the filter here, you can have a microphone here, and it all works as one. And because you've got the Ulanzi U-Rig Pro or a B-Script cage, whatever you, whatever you want to use, you can use the handles on the side, so you're not actually bothering with the clip or tapping those things that are attached to the phone. So that's how you use it with the newer ND, which is actually made for this clip. Now, what if you want to use a different ND filter with this? Now, this is a 37 millimeter clip on. So in order to use the filters that I've got, I need a step up ring, which is a Kiwi 37 millimeter to 52 millimeter step up ring. Now you can get varying ones of these. So if you've got a filter that's bigger than 52 millimeters, you can actually just buy varying ones. So if you search on eBay, Amazon, wherever, you can search 37 millimeters to whatever size you want to get the filter for and you can buy them that way. So they're not always just a limited set number. You can get varying degrees of what you need to match your needs. And that just screws straight on because it's a 37 millimeter, which is what this clip is. 37 millimeter to 52 millimeter. Now we've got that attached. We can now attach the ND filters by screwing on like a bottle lid. Nice and tight so it's secure. And that's how you put on a separate ND filter. So you wanna buy the step up ring, which in this case is a 37 millimeter to 52 millimeter or whatever size you need. So search that online so you can make sure you get the right one. And you've got the clip, like a clothes peg, make sure it covers the lens nice and clear, but not letting any light around the back to go through into the filter. You've then got the step up ring, which you attach. And then on top of that, you attach the filter. Now, if you're with Moment or something like that, you can you know, buy their phone cases, which then attach the lenses too nice and easy. But if you like me and you're doing separate sort of brands and things like that, these little clips are really, really good for attaching different sort of filters and things. So that is how I attach ND filters to my phone. So the first ND filter I wanna to talk to you about is a variable ND filter. Now this is a newer, or newer, how you wanna pronounce it, variable ND filter. Now I'm actually using a new tripod at the moment for this, which is a really great tripod, but this variable ND filter, it's okay in really sunny weather, but outside of that, I find it's really lacking in quality. 
The way you use it is you twist the front like a bottle cap. So this bit of the line's on you twist and you get the higher or lower density. So that line is telling you where it's at. So at the moment it's at 400 ND apparently, which is obviously very dark. So you use that in a really, really bright situation. And then if you're in a darker situation where there's quite a lot of shade perhaps, or it's just not that sunny, you'd bring it to a, a much lower number. The lowest number on this is an ND2. Now, as I say, the issue with this is when it's very contrasty, variable NDs as well have this X pattern, which can sometimes happen. So as you're twisting it, as it's going between the NDs, you might find you get a really nice looking shot, but you have this X pattern where you get a coloration changing in the corners or on the sides where the NDs are crossing over. And I just think when you're using a fixed ND, you don't ever have that issue. So I personally would go for a fixed ND, much like these ones. So these are my Moondog Labs ND filters. I absolutely love these filters. These are fixed ND filters. So this one, let's have a look, is ND, is a two-stop ND. Now what's great about these, because they're fixed, you don't get the X pattern kind of coloration issues that you'd have on a variable ND at times. These ones just stay at the level they're at and you know what you're working with. So if you're going out and filming on a sunny day, you can say, oh, okay, it's this amount of sunny, so I know I need an ND3 or an ND2 if it's not that sunny. Or if it's particularly sunny, like I did with my film Broken Zen, I'll use both of them together to get an ND5 because they're stackable as well. So with these, you can see there's a slight rim to the edge there. And that allows you, so this is a three stop ND, so this is when it's a bit brighter conditions. You can actually stack them together so you can twist. So this can twist. And then you've got an ND5, which is much darker. So if you've got really sunny conditions, you've A, got the option if you've got two of these, like I have, ND2, you've also got an ND3, and then you can add them together to make an ND5. Now, something I really would like to get is the highest ND that Moondog Labs do. Unfortunately, I don't have the money for that at the moment, so if uh, Moondog Labs, if you're watching, feel free to send me one. Um, but this is a really, really great quality ND filter. I really am so surprised, it's quite affordable as well, it's about 35 or $30, I think it is now. And they're just absolutely beautiful ND filters, really, really good quality. And you know, when you're using them, you're gonna get a lovely pop of color in your picture and it's just gonna look amazing. Now let's take these bad boys out for a spin in different varying light degrees. So as you can imagine, this is what the image looks like on a phone without an ND filter when you're trying to get the filmic settings. So you've got 24 frames per second, doubling the shutter speed to 148, so they both match up so you can get motion blur. With this level of lack of ND, should I say, everything's blown out as you can see it's completely white all the highlights are blown out even bits that aren't highlights are blown out and because the sensor is so small it's getting sort of an overload of light so it just can't process the image clearly so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you what it's like with the cheap newer ND filter that I have and see if that makes a difference okay so this is what the image looks like with the same settings with a newer ND filter now apparently this has an ND of 2 to 400 so we're going to move this from ND2 right the way to 400 and we'll show you the range that it gets in this really, really bright sunny conditions. So if we move the ND marker, the image becomes a little bit clearer, a little bit clearer. And then we should get a nice image that pops like this. So this is really great. Now the mode that I'm using this isn't uh, flat or log V2 or dynamic, this is just natural. So you're getting all the natural colours from the phone right now. And it looks really good. The colours aren't popping as much as I'd like, but it's a nice clear picture. Okay, so this is the image you get with an ND3. Now, this isn't meant for super sunny conditions. This is quite bright conditions. And the sun is really beaming at the moment. So we're still getting a lot of highlights blown out in the skies. The foreground is fairly clear. And the trees there in the background and the houses are fairly clear. But obviously the sky is way too blown out. So what we're going to do is we're going to stack the ND3 here with the ND2. And we're going to see what kind of image we get and how the colours the colors pop and also that will allow us to change the ISO as well. Okay, so now you've got an ND2 stacked with an ND3, which obviously then makes ND5. So as I mentioned before, you can stack these together, which is really great. And the difference between the newer filter and these Moondog Labs is pretty stunning, really. The color really pops with the Moondog Labs lenses. And while she had a clear image with the newer, this one is really, really good. I mean, stack them together, you just get a nice, clear, beautiful picture. And they stack really well, easily put together. They're very thin, so they're lightweight on the phone. And with the clip here as well, you can use it on an Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal like I have. Maybe some weights on as well to balance it out. And we'll show you a comparison side by side with the newer 
ND filters and these two stacked together. I'd love to get the strongest one that Moondog Labs do, so feel free to send me one of those Moondog Labs, that'd be great. This is the ND2 and ND3 stack, so you can see that we've now got no blown out highlights whatsoever. If you increase the ISO, yeah, you'll see we start to get blown out highlights quite quickly. But if we keep it down to its lowest, the colour really pops. The blues in the sky look amazing, the yellows look really nice on the trees in the background. This is a really good example of when you don't need ND filters and it's really sunny outside. So we're covered by treetops here in a park and we've got nice soft light being sort of filtered through the treetops. So we're getting a lot of brightness but no overexposure. So even on the top left there's maybe a tiny tiny specks but that's it and that's normal in a film so that's fine. This is the lowest that ISO can go as well. So without an ND filter you've got a beautiful image, all the greens popping and everything. And you can actually increase the ISO as well just slightly if you want to get it much brighter. I personally would probably have it at about, let's see, maybe about 58 here where it's still quite bright but it's not, you know, too much. So this is a really good example guys of using no ND filters in the sun in shade. So you don't always need ND filters if you're filming outside but this is probably the only example of that. Okay, so this is a really good example of when you've got really bright sunshine outside and inside's a bit darker, but you want to match them up. So if you've got too much light outside but not enough inside, if you try and bring the ISO up, you'll end up blowing the highlights outside. So you see the chair now is perfectly bright enough, but outside is completely unusable. And if you do the opposite, inside is too dark and outside looks okay. So you have to counterbalance that. We're going to use a LED light, this is the Falcon F7 pocket light, which I used in my last video about shooting at night time in low light. If we punch in more light from indoors, so you can see there the seat is quite dark, but if you bring in a light, that's obviously in shot, but if you bring the light there, it looks like the light's coming from outside still, and the person's face sitting there would be perfectly nice, well lit, and outside will still look good. You can also bring the light from above, so just use your hand and hang it up there. You can angle it towards the face as well to get more light, angle it down if you want, or to the face if you want to get it really nice. So punching in more light indoors is a really good way to counterbalance getting outside perfectly well exposed and having indoors exposed as well. So punching more light in indoors to counterbalance that works really well. Now let's talk stops and ND numbers. So if you've got a two stop, that's a very low amount of light you're cutting out. So you're actually going to be using that for indoor bright shots, things like that, as I showed you before, and using light to punch in to balance the indoor and outdoor exposure. So two stops equals ND4, and every stop you go up, the ND doubles. So three stops is eight, four stops is 16, etc., etc. Now, there's uh, more numbers that get involved in this. If you go online, there's some different sort of variations of how these are labeled, but these are the basic ones you want to stick to and how most NDs are labeled. So on the left here, that's a two stop. You can see through that lens quite clearly to the wood below. And the one on the right is a three stop. So you're actually always halving the amount of light from the two stops to the three stops and it's getting much, much darker, so use that for the brighter conditions. So use this as your kind of grid for ND numbers and filters. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you have and you've learned something, hit the subscribe button and the like button. It really helps grow this channel. Thank you to everyone that's supported this channel so far. It's going really well. And yeah, hope you've learned a lot from this. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, bye bye.